do my first tutorial type video. Uh, a couple of guys after I posted the um, uh, twisted rim bowl asked about if I would do a, uh, a tutorial on how I did the uh, layout and, and how I carved the, the uh, twist on that. So I went to one of them's, uh, I think his name is Yuval, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Sorry dude if I got it wrong, but uh, he has a wonderful video on turning a winged uh, bowl, a uh, holoform style bowl, and I thought, you know, that would make a really good twisted uh, piece. If I wanted, well, you'll see in the video uh, how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to start with a four inch thick block of pecan that I've roughly rounded with a chainsaw because my bandsaw only does three and a quarter, so, um, and I'm going to uh, basically do this, a similar bowl to his, uh, and then uh, from there I'm going to put a car carving into it. This is not going to be a rim twist though, and the layout is going to be done totally differently, so I'll probably later on do a bowl just specifically for the rim twist, uh, how to do the layout and carve it. Um, this one's uh, because of where the carving is going to be on it, I, the layout's totally different. I'm going to have to uh, resort to a compass and some other things that uh, are sort of little adapters I make. But I'm going to go ahead and at that point slow the film down and uh, go to regular speed and kind of explain uh, how I come to do the things that I do on one of these, how, how I figure out a layout and whatnot. Uh, I've never tried this one before. I've thought about it and have figured out how I think I'm going to do it. So there can be changes on the fly. Um, no problem at all sitting there going, okay, wait a minute, um, i got to change that because that's not going to work. And uh, if I come to those points, I'll definitely let you know. Um, but outside of that, what do you say? We give it a shot, all right? formed up. I've left the walls kind of thick because I don't know exactly how I'm going to be carving it, whether I'm going to be using the Dremel or whether I'm going to be uh, using chisels and a hammer. If I'm using chisel and a hammer, I want these walls thick enough to withstand the pressure. Um, outside of that, 
uh, decided that I'm going to do the spiral in here, and I'm going to I'm going to do what I'm going to call bend the fingers back. So, like if you were to draw the straight lines out all the way here, and they were flexible, when it's spinning, if you put your hand down here, you'd bend them back. So it's going to spin that way. Uh, so they'll be the the spiral fingers will be looking like like my finger there, on around it. Um, I could do it that way, but I thought going this way would be easier if I use a chisel like I'm following that line rather than trying to curve up this way. Um, but like I said, I left the walls a little bit thicker, so this is like three quarters of an inch thick all the way through. Um, this stuff is a little bit wet just yet. It's been sitting in my uh, drying shed for, oh, nine months, maybe a year. Um, and it was two years old when we got it, but the tree was four feet in diameter. Um, and this is like, uh, I don't know, probably if off of a piece it was about 10 feet up. And at that point it was probably about three feet in diameter. It was a big tree, 75 feet tall before they cut it down. And uh, anyway, so <clears throat> let's uh, get on with the layout, shall we? Um, I'm going to use the, uh, the indexing system that this lathe is built with. And then... We got the giant compass. Hold the pencil. I'm going to redo the lines with a silver pen so you guys will be able to see it better um, once I get it marked in pencil. But for the moment, this is where we're going to go. So we're going to lock it in there. Now it's kind of experimenting first. And this is kind of how the layout starts. Although I usually edit this part out because you don't really want to see me go through all this, but since that is actually the question this time, how do I do all this? Well, that's how I do it. Trial and error, a lot of it. That's what we needed. We needed a new pivot point up higher. You get a good solid pivot right there. Okay. So now I know what I want for a uh, for my markings. I'm going to take these markings off. All right. So yeah, that's got that. Now. We'll start the actual indexing process. Now, as you can see, this is a little loose on the pin. So what I do is just push it all the way one way. And then we'll move it over one space. All right, so if you're all excited about this, we're going to speed this up a little bit. Okay, so hopefully you can see that now. I put that silver paint pen on there. We're going to bring the crane down a little bit. And... So that's what we ended up with. I realized as I was putting the silver paint on there that I spiraled it towards me instead of away, but, you know, sometimes things happen for a reason, and sometimes they just happen for no reason. This is for no reason at all. I didn't realize it until after I was getting going. But, um, so I'm thinking that rather than letting the spiral widen out, what I want to do is bring down line, uh, ropes. So to do that, I want to try and keep this arc...
Well, I guess I better lock in. That would help. Okay, so I lock in. That would be that one there. And I'm just going to shorten my distance there so that it comes in at the top of that one. And then mark that down. So there we got them all marked out. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to round over each one of these lines like this and then these triangular parts in here I'm going to let them stay puffed up so it'll look like the cords here are biting down into the wood. I think that'll be kind of a neat effect. So the next thing is to set up to carve it. So give me a minute here and I'll uh, get set up and then we'll come back online. Okay so this is the tool. I, I keep getting comments asking me, to, or, uh, not comments on YouTube, but on uh, some of the other uh, uh, forums I'm on. When they see the videos, they come back to the forum and they ask uh, if I'm using a Fordham. Um, no, I'm using a Dremel 4000 with a flex shaft on it. So the handheld on it actually looks a lot like the Fordham. I mean, you, when this is hanging up behind me, you can't tell so much. But um, and then. I had uh, somebody ask once about what I was cutting the slots with, and that's this little bitty bit. It's basically a miniature slot saw blade. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but this is a... I, I came across this bit set. I didn't even know exactly what it was when I bought it, but it turns out it's a bird carving set. Uh, I think I picked it up for 20 bucks or something like that on Am Amazon. and. Uh, it has some of the best carving bits that I could ask for, and so they uh, they help me out a lot. And then this is like the uh, odds and ends tray. I've got rasp bits. Um, these I've got a couple of these. This is a uh, it's a tile bit for taking grout out of tile, and it turns out since it's, since it's solid carbide, it makes a wonderful rotary rasp uh, on wood. And so I use those a lot. I mean, like I said, I got a couple of them. Um, of course, sanders. I got the little flap sanders. But that's the, the Dremel kit. And then, aside from the Dremel kit, when we get into uh, roughing out, more or less, is done. Some of it's done with the Dremel. I'm going to put these lines in with that little saw blade looking thing. Uh, and then cut down to them with chisels. So these are the rasps. We get like a lot of small uh, heavy tooth rasps, and I got small finer tooth ones, files basically, uh, round ones, triangular ones. There's a round one. Uh, lots of different shapes and sizes. A couple of uh, half round uh, regular rasps. Uh, this big guy that, uh, believe it or not. Uh, I have been using this rasp since I was a little kid. Uh, I've had it for a long, long time. Uh, lost it for a long time, but my dad still had it, so it turns out I still have access to it. Uh, another bigger round one. I actually have a diamond set of Dremel bits in here, too. Uh, several different sandpapers, 80 grit, 120 grit, 220 grit. All of these things I use uh, for carving. And then Last but not least is the Master Carver chisels um, that I bought, and these are uh, these are really nice and they're razor sharp. They weren't really expensive. I think it worked out because I bought them in sets. They worked out to about ten dollars per tool, um, but they're really really sharp. Uh, but then again, I, when I got them, I took a buffing wheel to them and some polishing compound, and uh, I made sure that they were sharp. So, I don't only do wood turning, I do actual statues and carvings too. 
and uh, these get used a lot for that. So I've got a actually hoping to do videos of it. I've got a commission uh, person yard statues that are going to be fairly big. So maybe I'll do a video of that when I do it. It'll it'll be time lapse because they'll take a long time. They're like six or eight feet long. I think one's one's about six foot, the other's about eight foot. So. Alright, on with the carving part. Now that I've explained all that. Uh, wrench, drill wrench. So, let's get the cutter that I need into this. You might have guessed I've been collecting tools for a long, long time now. These are not, uh, some of these have been around, like I said, for a long, long time, but, uh, yeah. So as I said, I'm going to follow these lines. Okay, so all of our relief cuts are there, and uh, that's all they are, is just relief cuts, because by the time you're done, every one of those lines will completely disappear. Uh, that's why I don't mind that the bit burns a little bit, and you can see the black in them uh, holes there, it's just like, it smokes a little, so. But anyway, we're going to, uh, now we're going to start rounding over, uh, basically v in them out. Obviously on a piece like this, I can't get in here with a rasp and use the rasp to V them. If you watched the uh, spiral rimmed bowl uh, video where I can go around the outside of the rim, uh, that's you know, a good way to use the rasp and you know, to kind of follow the line and, and open that up and then come back in with the Dremel and round everything out. But I'm gonna just use a chisel and actually V these out. Uh, I got a small chisel over here. This should work well for this. The thing to pay attention to the grain of this piece is running this way. So down here, you're carving with the end or along the end grain, so it's going to carve out pretty easy. Over here, you got to pay attention to whether the end grain, like on this piece, this particular rope, I want to carve this side going that way, and that side going that way, and this one going that way, and this one going that way, because I can't go across it. I'll be breaking the end grain. I'll be lifting the grain, and I can't go that way on this one. I can go this way on it, but we'll see how it all works out. I'm, uh, I'm just going to have to try it and see what happens. Worst that can happen is I'll ruin the piece, right? <laughs> it wouldn't be the first one. I'm always afraid my big head's going to get in the way here of the camera. I kind of have to have a certain view. Let me uh, eliminate that problem by putting you off to the side a bit. And I'll uh, zoom in and touch. carving I can tell you and it was the thing that threw me for the longest time and made it really hard for me to have the patience to do it is that when you first start working on it it's gonna be ugly and that can be a deterrent for some people and it was a deterrent for me for a long time oh it doesn't look right it doesn't look the way I want it well what I found out is that the key to carving is persistence you keep working at the shape until it does look the way you want it. 
don't give up because it doesn't look that way the way you want it to after the first two chips fall off of it you know so just word to the wise I guess if you want to try wood carving that's one thing to know in there and they're kind of ugly because they're not uh, smoothed out or anything yet but that's okay that doesn't matter just having them in there is going to help us a bunch now what we're going to do is what I'm going to do is come in here and uh, each one of these triangles I'm going to go ahead and round them off using a uh, larger chisel out of the uh, master carver set uh, I'll see and we'll lock it in position again Pick one that's in a convenient spot. So that's got all those rounded down a little bit. Now I'm going to come back in with this little guy and we're going to put sanding or drum sander on, I guess is what it is. So I got in this little dude here. Let's see. Yeah, those are both 120s. So we'll just use a 120. How's that sound? Yeah. see what this does. Slow the drum down a bit. Don't need that in there.
Okay, so I went ahead and uh, switched to a burr and kind of broke the corners of all the uh, cords on it. And I got the other, the, the uh, triangles there all sanded out. I mean, not all sanded out, but sanded down enough that I can, uh, you can start to see what's, what's appearing. So, nice. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see if we can't start rounding off the cords. This is where it gets really tedious. I'm going to use some sandpaper here. Just so you know, I'm not joking. Uh, oh, here we go. You're actually going to come in. So here we are again, um, back, and I'm going to uh, decide I want to clean up my lines at the bottom of all the grooves. They're a little on the messy side uh, from where the uh, little wheeled cutter uh, cut them off. And so I want to uh, come back in with, this is a little ball, I mean it's a sixteenth of an inch or so, a real fine, like a ballpoint pen almost, and I'm going to come back in here and try to neaten up those lines real carefully. And then uh, I've decided I'm going to burn those lines uh, with the uh, pyro pen, whatever you want to call it. It's the cheap wood burner type thing. Um, because as you can see from looking at it on the video there, there's you can see the lumps, but it's not real defined. And I'm thinking that the burns will let it let stand out better. And then I might go ahead and do what I was talking about, about running little spirals over each one of the... Um, uh, to make these look more like cords or ropes that are twisted, you know. Uh, so we'll go, we'll see what happens, all right? So anyway, I'm gonna put you on high, on a high speed because this video is getting mighty long, but you'll understand what I'm doing now that I've explained it, right? Good, thanks. could do a whole lot more sanding on this but for uh, purposes of time I guess pardon me I am going to uh, instead go ahead and I'm gonna burn in the lines on it we're gonna see how that looks and then we may decide to put the uh, coil on here to make these look more like cords we'll see 
Um, I'm probably not going to finish this on the video uh, as far as the hollowing and stuff goes. Uh, most of you that have been asking questions already know how to do that part. Uh, but let's get the burns in there, see how it looks, and then uh, I'll uh, post some uh, pictures at the end of the video of it completely done, all hollowed out and everything. All right? So <clears throat> I'm probably just going to do the rest of this in high speed. My dad is also out here working, and when he fires up his lathe, I can't stop and do the talking thing which is why I went straight from the Dremel to the sanding and then more sanding and then more sanding. And that, you have to understand is that uh, for every 30 seconds, 15 minutes has passed. And I think that was about a half hour of sanding. Um, and like I said, I could do a lot more. Uh, that was only 150 grit. I haven't even gone to 220 on, on up, but uh, 220 on up shouldn't affect my burn lines. So, all right, I'm gonna get the wood burner out, get it heated up and then I'll be back. is as far as I'm going to take it on the video I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, I think I'm going to change the wing a bit and uh, the outside a bit and then I'm going to finish hollowing it out and uh, I'll, like I said I'll try to post some pictures of it when it's all done uh, at the end of the video so y'all can see what it looks like but uh, I think I'm going to leave the little lines I was talking about doing on here off I, I kind of like the way it looks now uh, there is such a thing as going too far with a piece of artwork, so I'm going to uh, stop there. It's like putting too much paint on a painting. So, <coughs> it's pretty slick. So I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you get something out of it. Uh, if you uh, haven't went over to watch, uh, again, I don't know exactly how to pronounce his name. I think it's Yuval or Yuval. Anyway, if you haven't been over to his channel to see the one that he made, uh, do so because I think his has a much better, oh, I don't know, aesthetic appeal to it. Uh, he made the wing lower and, and uh, the opening larger, so it looks a little, I think it looks a little nicer than this one uh, as far as his overall shape goes. Um, well, it looks over, this looks nicer than this one overall, period, but you know, that's just my opinion. Uh, I'm not real happy with the overall shape of this one, which is one of the reasons I'm saying I'm going to do some major reworking and change the wing and the and the outside uh, but for what it's worth here it is I will try to do a uh, twisted rim bowl again and uh, slow the video down to kind of explain some of what I'm doing actually I might I might slow the time-lapse speed down and actually just put the words on a screen to explain what I'm doing because I think that would be a faster way to do the video anyway Thanks for watching, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, do so. There's uh, much more to come, and they won't always be this long. Bye. So I thought that you guys might like to see the uh, oil go onto it. I just finished all the sanding and whatnot. Um, it's about three hours since the last time I had been on here. And the con is just really pretty wood once it is colored. Well, okay, oiled. This, well, linseed oil does tend to add some color to it, but it's kind of a golden, and uh, to me anyway, so.